It all began 89 years ago in Vienna, in August of 1923. It was the first Knessia Gedela, the first World Congress of Agudas Yisrael. The event brought together people from throughout Europe, including many of the greatest rabbinic leaders of the age, the Chavetz Chaim, the Ger Rebbe, Rab Chaim Oizer, the Chodkever Rebbe, the Radzina Rebbe, Rab Moshe Mordechai Epstein of Slabotka, Rab Issa Zalman of Slutsk, Rab Yosef Leib Bloch of Tells, Rab Shlomo Zalman Breuer of Frankfurt, and many, many others. The goal of the Knessia was to unite all segments of our people under the banner of Torah. And yet, there was an unexpected event at the Knessia, one that would unite our people in a way that no one had ever imagined. Rab Meir Shapiro was only 36 years old, by far the youngest of the featured speakers. He was the Rav in Sunik in Poland, a brilliant speaker, a charismatic leader, a spokesman for Torah Jews in the Sem, the Polish parliament. With a loud, clear, enthusiastic voice, he presented his idea, the Daf Yomi. He gave an example of a Jew who takes a two-week journey from Eretz Yisrael to New York, and under his arm he carries with him his Gemara, learning his Daf Yomi every day. He arrives in America, and the very first morning that he walks into a base medrash, he sees fellow Jews learning the very same daf. He happily joins them in their learning and establishes an immediate rapport with strangers who are now his chaverim. Can there be a greater expression of unity and harmony? What is more, said Rav Meir Shapiro, there are many mesechtas that very few people learn. Thanks to the daf Yemi, these mesechtas would no longer be orphans. When the Chavetz Chaim heard this, he rejoiced, and he said to Rav Meir Shapiro, when you come to the Eilam Ha'emes, all those lonely Masechtas will come out to greet you. His listeners at the Knessia were electrified. But would this idea take hold? Or would it just join many other wonderful and imaginative ideas in the dustbins of history? Now, it is the first night of Rosh Hashanah in the base Medrash of Ger. Tens of thousands of Hasidim have come to spend Rosh Hashanah with the Heilige Imre Emes. That evening, the Rebbe asks his Gabbai to bring him Masech the Brachas because he's about to start the Daf Yemi. The word spreads like wildfire. The leader of the largest Hasidus in the world is learning Daf Yemi. Within minutes, every Mesechta Brochus in Ger is in use, and people are waiting in line to use them next. For the rest of the 1920s and 1930s, Daf Yemi grew more and more popular, and fittingly, the mass celebration of the first Siyam Hashas was held in 1931 in Rav Meir Shapiro's own city of Lublin. The second Sfirim Hashas of Daf Yomi took place in Lublin. There were about 20,000 people assembled in Lublin, many uh, Jews of Lublin, the Talmidim of Yeshivas Chachma Lublin, and very prestigious and very great guests. It was a great event, a great event uh, which lasted a whole day. And then came 1939, and the sun set on the Jewish world of Europe. Devastation, destruction, and desolation. And yet after the war, slowly and painstakingly, the Jewish nation began to rejuvenate, and with it, the Daf Yemi. This is the only reason why we survive as a nation. Not because the Jews survived here, or because I could escape with my father from, from the Nazi. As a nation, we survived because of this union, because of this learning of uh, the Moran Auschwitz. After Auschwitz, Sachsenhausen, Oranienburg, Ordorf, and Buchenwald, 
we celebrated I together with a small, a small group of survivors of Shayos applied the Eden, celebrated the third Siemash house, which uh, none of us participated in or learned it. Maybe a little bit in the ghettos, but certainly not in the concentration camps. The EP camp of Feldafin, where I was, they assembled and they celebrated. They had three Gimoras, three Gimoras Nida, and about four Mesechtes, five Mesechtes, Brochus, in order to have follow to start the fourth Machsor of Davioni. And of course, those Jews who were Achalashing uh, to, to, to see Yiddish oasis again and to learn, they grabbed it. And it so happened that to the sea and to the Mesebe itself, they brought these three Gemorrahs and a few Gemorrahs brochers. And here we started again. Onto the shores of America came tens of thousands of displaced Yidden. Under the leadership of Gedoli Yisrael and Great Askonim, they heroically began to rebuild from the ashes, establishing Chadorim, Yeshivas, and Bate Medrash of higher learning. But what about the Balabatim, the common man? Rav Pinchas Taitz of Elizabeth, New Jersey, began teaching Gemara in Yiddish every Matzah Shabbos on the Dafa Shavua radio program. Grown men cried when they heard the sweet words of the Daf in the language they grew up with back home. Years later, Rav Meir Applebaum created Torah tapes and every Daf and Shas was now available in Yiddish and English. Rav Eli Tarabam took it a step further and initiated Dila Daf. Now through the benefit of modern technology, thousands are able to learn the Daf at home, on the road, or during a break at the workplace. In the early 1960s, visionaries like the beloved Rabbi Baruch Borchad and the internationally known Jewish diplomat, Rabbi Chaskel Besser, created the Dafyemi Commission of Agudas Yisrael. Rabbi Besser taught me that Jewish education is the key to Jewish continuity, which is why the Lord of Foundation, under Rabbi Besser's leadership, built a network of Jewish schools across Eastern Europe. But it's also true for Jewish adults. Rabbi Bessel would always say that Jewish learning is a lifelong undertaking and a lifelong privilege essential to Jewish survival. That is why he invested so much time and energy in spreading the Daf Yomi. The Daf Yomi Commission provided Magide Shur to groups who needed them. They printed thousands of small Gemaras that could be taken anywhere and encouraged and hosted celebrations of completed Masechtas. Today, the Dafyemi Commission is involved in numerous initiatives to strengthen Limit HaTayra. New translations, contemporary Purushim, and annotated editions of Talmud Bavli helped further stimulate the growth of learning. As the quantity grew, so did its quality. Dafyun stimulated learners to further heights, Mifalashas and Dirshu enlisted multitudes in rigorous learning programs around the world. Following a small gathering in the Sixth Seam in the Beis Yaakov of Borough Park Dining Room, the first major public seam in New York City was held in Manhattan Center in June of 1975. Approximately 2,000 people were in attendance. Seven years later, in 1982, the Felt Forum was packed with 5,000 people with several thousand outside clamoring to get in. In 1990, Madison Square Garden was filled to capacity with over 20,000 people in attendance. The 1997 Seum filled the garden once again, plus the NASA Coliseum. Another seven years, and it was Madison Square Garden and Continental Airlines Arena, plus the Javits Center for Overflow. Each Siam Hashas inspired thousands all over the world to start learning the Daf. And here we are tonight, the largest Siam Hashas in history, where a great American palace of sport has been transformed 
into a sanctuary of the Spirit. Tonight, in the presence of close to a hundred thousand people, we celebrate with pride and delight our nation's greatest achievement, the everlasting commitment to Liman HaTayra for each and every Jew. Tonight, we send a message to Achenu B'nai Yisrael that no matter where you are, no matter what you do, we are all united, Ke'ish Echad, Belev Echad, by the sacred words of the Holy Daf. May that message resonate around the world and hasten the arrival of Mashiach Tzidkenu, B'mheira, B'yameinu, Amen. Amen.